Hey guys, and welcome back to Auction Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Switchy, and we have been on the LZ Alpha for whoa, 1,075 cycles now. But the big overarching problem that we have at the moment is one of food. Uh, you can see that we are making tofu to just about scrape us through. The tofu that is being made by nosh beams that just are hanging around in the environment. Not once have I actually managed to make myself a nosh bean through domesticated circumstances. No, indeed, they're all just kind of lying around out in the wild, which is probably something we should address at some point. But actually, the thing I really want to address is the temperature disparity in this box over here. As you can see, we have got a whole a bunch of millwood at the bottom. We've got some bristles blossom up top and we do have some hydrogen going around trying its best trying its very best to keep this place cool and indeed it's coming through at 27 degrees but this stuff here is being fed dirt now that should sound okay to most people but I need to remind you that the only dirt production that we have on the go at the moment is happening down in our steam box and down in the steam box, it is quite warm, as I'm sure you can uh, understand. It is about 200 degrees, enough to get the steam up and lifting and being turned into power up at the turbines here. But this means that any dirt that is being made from the polluted water being dropped out of our petroleum generators is coming out at quite a temperature, let alone the fact that actually this area here, where it does pass through as well, is a hotter temperature than what I've actually chilled it down through going through here. There's a little bit little bit of a problem. And so, in summary, the, uh, the dirt that gets dropped off at this conveyor receptacle here. It's got a little bit of temperature in it, much more above the 30 degrees that the bristle blossoms, bristle blossoms sorry, want to live in. So I'm going to rip all these up. I, that's, that's just the way we're going to do it. Let's go for buildings and let's, uh, let's I'll totally uproot all of these. Uh, not only are we going to uproot everything and rip it all down, but I'm actually going to repla replace it all with these hydroponic farm tiles so that we can grow more bristle blossom because I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling this will be a suitable food source for us going forwards. Oh, and a, uh, a growing saga from last time. We've got a volpup loose in the in the base. Uh, I'm trying to desperately either wrangle it or attack it. I don't I don't care which at this point. I really do not care which. I just want it to be dealt with. But here comes Mad Frank. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? I think he's got it. I think he's got it. All right, beautiful, beautiful. I and he went away. And he went away. Quick, dig it out. Dig it out. This is this is all highest priority, guys. Let's get it done. This is gonna end up being awkward. We got kind of trapped between two bits of obsidian here and as long as we can keep that oh we fighting him and he's is he dead oh yeah he's dead now okay Whew. crisis over not an ideal ending to be honest we got him because our tiles here were not solid obsidian all the way across there were some sedimentary tiles in there must have run out of obsidian and they uh he managed to dig his way through there but we, we fixed that now and he's dead. Rip. Right, with the last bit of pipes going, and we should now be feeding a whole new crop of bristle blossoms over here. Hopefully this will lead us to a wider food source. As you can see, most of it at the moment is in meat. Okay, that's cool. Let's try and translate that into barbecue as quick as possible, if we can. Shrouticus, how are you doing over here? Let's see what... No workable order. What about all the meat that's lying around? I don't... I don't get... I don't... What? <laughs> uh, Jelly is currently collecting up all the meat and bringing it over here. Fair enough. Well, with that one small problem in, in hand, shall we go and have a look at what the other one has been for, like, the, the longest of times? We've been struggling pretty hard at getting the uh, the space area sorted out, and uh, Francis John, the boy that I have been copying off for almost all of this series, uh, I have found out that he's just released a new tutorial on how to try and keep this area uh, all up and working well for you, and it turns out I am very, very, very close. Uh, I will go ahead and do a few changes up here, and let's see if we can spot what they are. Whilst we're taking care of some of the larger matters up at the top of space, I think it's about time we try to open up the last bit of the map that we have not got uh, uncovered here, and maybe coming up here will be the best way of doing so. I think that's the... Yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll find out if there's any reasons not to, but I've got ladders going up and down everywhere anyway. Okay, we're going to do something that might be a little dangerous, but we got to the point where there's so much petroleum in this loop that it's uh, it, it's freezing up. There's not enough room for it. I try to uh, to disassociate this ethanol group with it because it's got actually got hot, hotter than the uh, the petroleum is. So I, I cut this out and it just all froze up. So I'm going to introduce 200 degrees petroleum, uh, nearly two tons of it, a ton and a half of it to the system. We'll see how well this deals with it. Uh, the, the big problem I've got is this steam turbine is now going to super overheat uh, and obviously keeping it nice and cool is really really the aim of the game if you want this uh, thermal aqua tuner to carry on working. 
I mean, it is constantly cooling down, so we're just we're just gonna be like yay for now. It's below 100 degrees. That's a double yay. Uh, obviously, below 100 degrees, so the steam turbine could work. So as you can see, the changes that I've made are actually relatively minimal. We've still got the robo miners. We've still got the cooling loop. The thing that's different, there's a little bit of a drywall behind there, but even that is still not enough. If we have a look, the robo miner is currently at 45 degrees, whereas the petroleum is at like 80 something. Surely these two should be equal, right? Well, no, because there is no way for the the robo miner to interact with the drywall you know imagine imagine the scenario we're currently in space right and these two are uh, ostensibly close but not touching right you know the backing wall and there is the building itself and you, you would imagine an air gap but there's no air so there's no way for the heat to transfer through that medium and we need to provide that medium uh, so the way that I'm gonna do that oh man it is noisy up here the way that I'm gonna do that is use this empty pipe tool ah nighttime comes I, I just I literally just want to drop out one of these and let's see if we can do it okay change my mind we're not gonna do it over that and we're gonna try and do it this end now that the new day has done I would like to extract some pipe contents over here. Just a single one. Oh, I it's really close to the, the buttons to move the, uh, the the map around. May have had a mini access issue. Thankfully, we've gone and sorted that out relatively quickly. So how long until this is going to be dealt with? Let's have a look. Errands number two. Beautiful. Okay, here comes Luna dropping a little bit out. Obviously, as soon as one gets dropped, we want to stop, press cancel there. Uh, and then this petroleum, I want to empty. All right, who's, who's going to be doing that? Luna on the next job. I reckon if we just tell her to move, suddenly it's become going to become her very next job. Let's see. Yeah, okay. And what's going to happen with that now? She No, she's not doing it. Cancel empty. I... Hmm. Broken animation? Yeah, broken animation. Okay, so you saw a whole load of the uh, the petroleum kind of got, got loose there. That is no problem. The, the thing we really want to have taken note of is this little blob of petroleum here. It'd be really nice to get rid of the sedimentary rock as well. But there's a little bit of petroleum there. And now, and now you can see that our robo miner is climbing in temperature. That is as it ex uh, accepts the temperature out of this a petroleum in here. Uh, hopefully that should actually be starting to uh, bring itself down in temperature as the thermal aqua tuner over here does its work. Now we just need to repeat that for all of them. All right, I'm gonna do something desperate. We are going to ask them to store the stuff. All right, that should hopefully get this one little bit of sedimentary rock. Oh, it's not all of it, there's more. All right, let's try again. So someone go and get that bit of sediment of mafic rock now, mafic rock. And we appear to have hit equilibrium with the petroleum in the pipe. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so we've got a little bottle of petroleum at each one of these places now. Now we need to try and empty all these. And unfortunately, there's not really a way of... Oh, I bet there is. I bet there is a way of turning the priority up. I'm too used to using the numbers down here. But of course, ah, oh, that's all of them. Even like this, we cannot set that priority higher. Sweep priorities. T uh, not sweep. Uh, emptying priorities. Turns out they can't be messed with. Wow, the, the animation is properly broken out here. Every time she just walks up, the yellow bar goes across and then nothing for a little while okay there we go we got we got some more there is there actually some being left behind yeah petroleum about 300 grams all right i'm about it i'm about it we're losing quite a lot to the world though that's 10 kilos to swap for three like 10 kilos to swap for a third of a kilo Ooh. now the first thing i have to point out is you know this is not going to work right um the the reason being look how much regolith there is above us and look how much space there is not down here so i'm expecting a little bit of manual intervention to be needed. Why aren't the doors open? What's, what's gone wrong here? No, no, there is work. It's just very, very slow. All right, fair enough. Do I want to prepare a dig order to help out? I don't know. I, I, I kind of don't feel like we'll need it that much or, or even if the duplicates will be actually that helpful. But we'll set up just like the bottom line here, right? And then any, th any, any towering p pillars will be able to get dealt with. Oh, that's a slow drop, but we'll go across like that. I mean, they're already springing into work now. They're entombed now. Okay, we, we just need to deal with this. I'm not sure if you guys are aware. Is this one class as entombed as well? Okay, miss, please come and help. How about actually we say, hey, this is a priority. This is a serious priority. Because look, the temp temperatures be climbing, yo. Temperatures be climbing. But I'm fairly sure the moment we get rid of this, yeah, there we go. It's helping out. Okay. And now this should go through a lot quicker. But man, this, this one's also slow. Look at the Robo Miner. It's not the fastest in the world, is it? Maybe we'll turn these priorities down and put these ones up. Well, downtime's come along to ruin my day again. 
Bah, this seems to be doing some good work, though. Well, it mostly works, but I feel like we can do better. The main thing that I'm noticing is this one got entombed, right? And also, look, this can't reach further forward. So what happens if we bring this one back a few blobs? Uh, a few blocks, sorry. Uh, then move this one back two blocks so that this range can come down and clear out the stuff in front of him. I, I feel like that might be the way to go. Should we try and enact that? I think we should try and enact that. What is Mad Frank up to right now? He's just kind of hanging out on here. Can we move him somewhere and see what's up? I mean, the fact that he's stuck in his suit seems to be a little bit problematic. I'm not sure. He's got a soil. Let's go see what's going on over this way. Let's go and have a look here. Yeah, now all of these are still enabled. All right, Mad Frank, please just let's let's go put you inside one of these, right? Wh which one can you make it through? None of them. Why can't Mad Frank make his way in? Mad Frank should be able to make it through here. Why can he not? Mad Frank, Mad Frank. He's done something. Look, he can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere. So he can get here. Oh, look at this. What happened? Oh, I know what happened here. I super know. Yeah, look, look, ladder going up to explore the bit that we hadn't looked at. Oh, that's totally my own fault. <laughs> well, hopefully once we give him this dig order, he can go and make it work, right? Hopefully, let's, let's cancel this one. My attention was drawn to this because Misaligned was the only person dealing with space. And I was like, well, where's Frank? Okay, I think it's time for another test. The only ones I'm really interested in is this pile of regolith here. It's gonna fall down, and I wanna see whether this one goes for it. So let's have a look. Probably slow it down just a little bit as well. Actually, not why, not why the doors are opening. Oh, that's like the longest part there actually is. I'm slowly also destroying stuff over this side to uh, to start continue on. Just continue on. Obviously, we're gonna to wanna to do this all the way across. So this regolith drops down here. Does this one jump into action? It's not going to because there's not enough space. I mean, we'll we'll just see how it works out, right? Oh, this might work out for us. This might work out. Yeah! All right, cool. It can actually clear out if this gets a little bit entombed, which means this one, which will never get entombed, can shoot further forward and start the whole process down. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I've begun preparations of doubling this out and making sure that we can have a regolith digger underneath every single one of these bunker doors. But I'm going to pause the game because we have a little bit of a problem. Down here, not down at this hit little heat pocket down here. No, but if we come over to this side, what's this? Oh no, one of my oil pumps have melted. How has that happened? I'm not entirely sure how it's happened. Look, look at this. What is this? We've even lost the timer down underneath. I need to go to the automation. I need to get my timer set. Here. We need to make this, let's, let's make this out of steel if we can, and drop that in there like that. I'm even going to make this the highest priority because we need to turn the crusher back on. We seem to be having a bit of a situation where the natural gas in here has got hot enough to melt my oil reservoir, and that that's not, that's not a winner, guys. I'm also going to try and rebuild it out of steel steel but oh no no i'm not i'm not about this we also need to get this crusher on that that is a must oh look look this is where the temperatures come up and through maybe we can also replace these and that that might that might help <laughs> Instead of melting point, 327.5. What's the gas around here? 340, I just saw. Oh, no. No wonder. 360, the tiles underneath. Yeah, yeah. This, 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 is, this is how it's happened. I'm going to try also moving this gas element sensor up one. Let, let's see if that does anything better. Okay, I've literally just copied the settings from this fast turn over here. We're just going to watch all of this get bumped disappeared in one go. All right, beautiful. This should now almost immediately start either bringing the temperature down or like regulating it out a bit more. I was kind of hoping we could get this steam. Uh, if we could if we could get down another layer and then open up a vacuum, uh, that, that would be great. But I think at the moment, the two oil wells were actually a little bit too much for this cooling system to deal with. We need a better cooling system, a turbocharged cooling system around here at some point. But I'm doing space today, so that's for another day. Oh no, 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 no. You're going to overheat yourself. You're Get away over eat yourself. Okay, so we've mostly gone and got the whole uh, whole system into place. As you can see, these top doors are not fixed in, in spot. Uh, it turns out we've gone and put the power in place before I emptied out the petroleum. So we're going to have to go through very quickly, just connect that, connect that. Uh, I've also realized that I totally didn't need at any point to put insulated pipes in here. Normal pipes would have done because, of course, we're in vacuum.
vacuum, the ultimate insulator. Okay, so now that they've got going around there, I need to, of course, get my uh, empty pipes. There we go, empty the pipes. Uh, can we ask her to do it even on an empty pipe? Yes, it turns out we can. All right, beautiful, beautiful. You, my friend, need to be wrangled. Doobie-doo, empty pipes. And then empty liquids with the broken, broken animation. <laughs> okay, boom, there we go, there we go. Liquids away. I was about to give a little conversation here about how, look, the smart batteries have a little bit more power in them in the uh, the normal jumbo batteries, and that's because of the little of the uh, because of the not power wasted. These the jumbo batteries are leaking more power just through like heat and 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 losses all the time. But literally, whilst I was looking at thinking about what words I would use, as you can see, my words didn't come out very well. Uh, this guy went and did an overheat, uh, so I'm going to slightly change the course of this ethanol to come down and touch each one of these batteries at least once and hopefully hopefully get this down to quite a cool temperature down here i mean yeah it's, it's a little warm right but up top we are still waiting for things to be deconstructed before i can hook up these space scanners and just let let it go just let it go doesn't look like there'd be nearly a hundred uh, orders here but look yellow alert 98 there's nearly a hundred of them okay while well, the 30 or so insulated pipes was nice and easy now everyone needs to go and grab the iron for the radiant pipes and that's going to be a little bit more tricky not that tricky. Of course, we've got people who are moving much faster than any others. Jelly is greased lightning on the floor. He's just off and go, going and do things. I thought Forrest would be the uh, the top contender, but no. Jelly is our winner here. Let's have a look at his skills, actually. Over here, we've got an athletics of 22. I want to see what Forrest is at. Because I noticed that Forrest is another fast guy. 21. I mean, he is fast, but not quite as fast. Of course, the big problem here is most of these guys are bringing iron down from up top. And if I remember correctly, most of the iron up there is like several hundred degrees hot so we'll have to see how that works out there is a lot of temperature around here to absorb that to like share it out with a lot of thermal mass rather than temperature if you will uh but we'll, we'll have to see as you see everything's now overheating just a little bit but i think we'll be fine there as for, for, for starters these are lead batteries so of course that is going to be what the the lower melting point is about uh but we're going to start cooling soon we're going to start cooling it down very very soon i'm just very quickly going around and turning the auto repair off of these guys just for the moment I'm going to turn them back on once we've got these pipes in place, but until then, all they're only, all they're going to do is carry on overheating. So let's uh, let's hold off on that for a little bit. Oh wow, everyone's come down here to get iron. Mm, this is also hot. <laughs> Okay, last two pipes in place. Beautiful. I'm going to press F6 at this point and have a look at the pipes. What I want to do is I want to move this one up and this one down. Take my little snip snip tool here and go across. All right, this should now divert down. We're going to have a little bit of time without this being all that full of liquids. I'm a little bit worried about that, actually, if I'm to be honest. Things are going to start getting quite hot in there. We'll just have to keep an eye on this and hope, hope that it works out all right. As you can see, the temperature is still going down. But now, once that has cleared through, I should imagine it's going to start going back up again ever so slightly and we're just kind of settling out 2.5 2.6 2.7 i mean we've got a long way to go so hopefully it'll be okay uh the one thing i needed to remember to do was to turn all of this back on all right cool uh, let's just keep this running uh when when this gets filled up i'll i'll see what's going on i mean this we're gonna have a bit of time to try and like try and chill everything back down i mean is this is coming through at 40 as long as this is no higher than 40 then everything should work out a-okay right uh, and and yes actually i think everything's going to work out perfectly beautiful uh it's coming out of here at 10 degrees so, still so we should end up getting this down at 10 degrees i wonder if that's because of the mix of temperatures i don't know i don't know but we're going to be coming out of here look this is still more chill we're actually chilling down the gap the uh, liquids that have come off of the batteries with the hydrogen that we have in here oh that's 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 crazy and the cycle continues and we're into a nice nice big loop now beautiful beautiful it should just stay stable all right i suppose with everything in place i've just got two wires to connect back up i've got a power wire across the top and then i've also got an automation wire across the top if we connect these back up this should now mean that all the doors are functional and i suppose the only thing left to do is to disconnect my little switch from here and put a not gate across because that is how we power this why is this without power this whole power shortage problem is is definitely something something i need to address at some point we're, we're getting some powers through but it's it's nowhere near enough look at all these power transformers that are trying to take power and we've only got this many generators well i suppose i've got a small prediction that this area is probably going to get meteored at some point if we can't get the power flowing to this uh to the space scanner 
then when the automation uh, is just saying no, there's no problem, they could be an, uh, a meteor inbound because this space scanner isn't going to change its mind unless there's power, right? Unless there is power. It's just 120. Hmm. All right, well, anyway, here we go. This not signal is going to be passing a green signal through to all of these, and I want to see what happens when they all are doing their digs. I mean, th this is confusing, right? Where, where's all our natural gas at? Has this just shut down or something? I mean, it looks like it should be doing fine. This is at the right temperature. Why is it not pumping? Power issues. Oh, no. I mean, we've got power over here. This battery here. Okay, I see. we got... We got we got a lot of power systems on the go here. Why isn't just hey? Can we can we have this as a higher priority? It's a useless uh, waste of a dupe, but it will get some of the gas it's moving. It's like this one, Use, useless waste of a dupe, really. If he, if he was pumping gas, this would probably be more efficient, right? Let's move you just away and see if we can't get you going elsewhere. No, no. Well, maybe, maybe. No, current errand. <laughs> Down to a six. It is quite important, but it's not that important. Okay, away he goes. I, I have no idea where he's going to go. Fabri fabricate rock supply. Mm, okay, I mean, like, fair enough. Fair enough. Like, I mean, the doors are almost open. <laughs> they open overnight. I'll let you know. Okay, legitimately terrifying. So, what has happened here is everything has got entombed apart from this one, one, one down the end here. How is this getting overheat already? Ah, oh, that's not great. And no power. Mmm, big problems. Big problems. Okay, so the power issue, it's a big issue. It's a big issue. If we just go across like this and, um, hey, dupes, and you're probably not even going to get out of bed, but when you get out of bed, can you come save the day? Please come save the day. The fact that this, aha, aha, this is iron, not steel. Oh, no, wait, is it? I don't, I don't know why this one is overheating so fast compared to all the others. This is what this one I'm trying to figure out now. Overheat temperature is 275, and the actual temperature is pretty hot, right? I'm literally one degree over. Literally one degree over. Hmm. So if we'd solved the power issue, then all this would suddenly suddenly work fine, right? Well, much like watching Starship pop itself off its launching mount and all the explosion come out underneath, the thing to remember here is this is not a failure. This is a learning experience. We get to find out where our weaknesses lie power and how to go ahead and fix them and that is totally what we're going to do moving forward from here well none of them lost their petroleum that's good that's good that that's a very e gads this is what i was about to say i'm worried about okay all right okay e uh just do that and uh <laughs> we'll repair whatever damage happens ah. Oh, 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 ow. oh, well, so much for the petroleum. Oh, it's another big one. Ah, the doors are closing, but it's going to take a while because I've got no power. Okay, the doors are very nearly closed. No one died up here. That's good. We did lose a little mesh tile. That's, uh, that's a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting that to happen at any point. Though we've got an awful lot of repairs to go around and do. That didn't actually turn out so bad. Okay, I have a solution, but it's going to take ripping down this little metal refinery here. We probably might even need to rip down this kiln because we need to make room for a building we have not built yet. Uh, not in utilities, in refinement we can find the glass forge. Yes, I have not made a single piece of glass yet, so we're going to have to see if we can work on that. I'm just going to leave you guys to try and figure out what my quick, horrible and hacky fix might be for this particular problem of power up in space. We well, dropped a whole buttload of incredibly hot petroleum on the floor. We're going to have to try and do something like that. If we just sweep it up, I'm sure if we actually we just sweep everything up, it'll all be fine in the end, right? Oh, that's inconvenient. There's a little output right there. Okay, we need to deal with that before we do anything. Liquid bridge. Uh, I didn't really want to put any sort of uh, directionality on this, but there we go. That's the one we need. Hopefully this will get dealt with, like, super, 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 super fast. Yeah, that fast. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Thanks. This is a bit weird. I've got, like, water, 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 and there's a little bit of carbon dioxide trapped underneath the water. How has this happened? we got 25 kilos just sat up there. I mean, like, interesting, but carbon dioxide is a terrible conductor of heat. Uh, Alright, yeah, I mean, what are we going to do about it? Like, honestly, what are we going to do? We're just going to leave it. <laughs> 
So the way that I believe this liquid, fo uh, this gas for glass forge, oh, I can speak really, guys, works is by pouring out molten glass. Look at that. It says so down there. Now, obviously, we're going to have to deal with some very, very hot glass at this point. And I think obsidian's probably the way to go with that. Now, what am I going to be doing with this glass? Well, you see, we've got this handy pool of water over here. I'm just going to try dumping it in there. I, d I don't know what's going to happen when we do that, but we are going to try. I suppose I'm also going to queue up a few glass. I don't... I don't know... I have no idea what the output of this is going to be. We're, we're just going to have to to wait and see, really. <laughs> I suppose it's confession time. I have never used one of these, like, ever. <laughs> okay, I've done a quick Rika jigger. We've moved all of the, uh, the, the refined carbon and the lime out of this bin and popped it over here. And we're now keeping sand so that the glass forge can get restocked. Oh, 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 Forrest is making some. Okay, so he just literally dropped some sand in there. And it's been gone through the egg timer. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. We're boiling it up and it's going to be output via this pipe. I'm going to assume, just waiting for that yellow bar to get all the way across. Okay, so we did one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, look at the heat, guys. I've got a little, little worry that this is going to get super over, overwhelmed. This is coming out of 1,500 degrees. What happens when it hits the bottom? Disappears. No longer a thing. Have I broken it? I may have broken it. So straight away, the obsidian has melted almost straight away. We've got some glass here. Okay, how about if we just uh, grab this and... Uh, no, 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 sorry. Grab this and just kind of drop it there. Uh, we'll then just get rid of all that. See, see if that's any better. Hmm, the fact that we may have wasted that first bit of glass is very interesting. I was kind of just expecting it to turn up down here. It doesn't appear to be in the pile of stuff anywhere. Okay, super, super intrigued to see how round two is going to go. I would prefer to have a load of water on the floor but all I had was petroleum and if the, like the 1000 degree glass comes along and touches the petroleum we're gonna end up with an awful lot of sour gas in here uh yeah just like that oh wow mmm okay new plan I mean the good news is it didn't instantly vaporize the uh didn't instantly vaporize the petroleum there so that that might work out better I'm gonna start like my first plan was actually gonna be oh let's just go and drop this down like we'll, we'll jump it over a few of these and just drop it down here maybe turn this into an airflow tile and let it hit that one uh but I think first I'm gonna try turning all these into steel in fact Super high priority. Go, go, go. Okay, so some of the naphtha got liquefied and has rolled down here. No, no, no. Maybe more petroleum rolled down here. I don't care what rolled down there. What the effect has been is to throw some water over this top tile here. And that was kind of exactly what I wanted. This should now just share out its whole thermal load quite nicely. And hopefully as long as this gets worked on by someone, let's just turn it back up onto a high priority. Luna's on the way. Uh, and we'll see what the end result of this is. Okay, here we go. Here we go. She's asking about the toilets. We should probably go and check on that at some point but looking at this we have got a little blob of water coming out i say water of course it is super hot molten glass uh some the sand got delivered but what just fell out the top i don't know uh where's my glass there it is oh it is back there okay okay uh, it's dropping in temperature rapidly and we're not melting anything though we are turning water into steam and condensing it back down i'm fine with that i am super fine with that okay with this obsidian tile here let's see if we can do something better with it i don't know whether anything has got a higher like the fact that the temp the air the fact that this insulated obsidian pipe is overheating is um it's a thing look the 27th no it shouldn't why is it overheating let's go two of ceramic let, let's let's just hope that that's gonna work, right? 1800, no, obsidian was, was higher, much higher, right? So now that we've got glass being made, what are we gonna use it for? Well, all the way up in space, you can see I've built myself a solar panel here. This is connected up to the power line that connects to the space scanners, because I feel like they are the important ones. And as you can see, we do not have any power running through there right now, but I want to go ahead and connect these together and see what happens. We're gonna give these a go and a, a yes, uh, and hopefully when this opens, Opens. Eventually, when this opens, we'll get some sort of power coming through. We've got to wait for the light to come down and fall onto these. I've got a little bit of a worry that actually this pile here is going to be making some trouble for us in this one here as well. But we, we will see. We will see. Obviously, my biggest concern right now is the fact that the robo miners don't have any power. What I might try and do is set up a secondary... Um, 
secondary power transformer output to send power into said system. It says it's making 3A, current wattage zero. Oh no, what? why would it tell me one number here but actually not, not have anything to do with that? Ah, oh, that's a bit of a shame. <laughs> Light still refuses to come through here. Like, look how bright it is at the top. But of course, the doors, they're not open yet. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. We're getting some power. It's only 200 watts. That's kind of fine because we only need like uh, 210. If we look at the power, you can see, uh, sorry, 240. Ideally 360, but you know, whatever, whatever. We'll take just a, a little amount through here. I think this isn't being interfered with here. Okay, we've had a meteor shower detected. This kind of works out well for us. The uh, the the robo miners are still taking out little bits here and there because they finally have some power. Turns out I'd somehow taken this little bit of power wire away. I don't know how I'd managed to do that, but the big worry oh is the fact that the bunker doors, as you can see, are not getting enough power to shut. Looks like maybe it's about halfway, so I have doubled the number of batteries, or at least asked for double number of batteries to be put in place. And we'll just see what happens by the end of this. I'm not keen on the fact that this can still drop its regolith through. Look, look at that. Look at that. This this surely means that an meteor can still drop through. Oh, no. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, these extra power. It's a, it's a must. It's a must. Not just a like. Okay, we finally got the door shut. That, that's not too bad, actually. We took two hits. Uh, and this guy is back to scanning incoming object detected. It's back to scanning its, uh, its surroundings. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. And the end of the shower brings us the doors opening again. All we need to do is feed through a little bit more power and this will be 100% sorted exactly the way I want to do it. I think we're going to be able to fit some more solar power under there. But with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time. Well, we've still got some power issues to address, but I've got a feeling the solar power plants are going to be our way forwards there. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.